Hi, I'm Jim Harry, I'm three score years and ten, plus a bit more. Hi, my name's Stacey. I've been coming to Glasgow Lane for a wee while now, so I have a pet shop, which I've run for years, and it's in my jeans, and here I am. My name's Anne. Well, my name's Stephen Kay. Right. Uh, I'm a bus mechanic. I've been a bus mechanic for 40 years. Hi, my name's Caroline, and I'm 33 years old. A number of years ago, um, I was at a church in Mount Florida uh, where I was an elder. Um, and my father before me, and in fact, he, my mother and father uh, brought me up in, in the church. And they made a commitment then, when I was born, to bring me up in the face, which they did. I'm my brother. I gave my life to God quite a while ago, and Billy Graham came to church. Billy Graham even came to the school, and what I heard just made me changed my life and changed the trajectory that I was on. And I don't have a, a big story to tell or a revelation. I've always had God in my life, or God has always been in my life, uh, through good times and bad times. Uh, I've always believed, but I've dipped in and out of probably the Christian way of life. But I have asked God into my life. I've been trying to make sense of my life and what my life has all about, been all about for the past few years now. And I was, uh, I've had bad, bad, bad health and trouble in my marriage and stuff like that. And I first started coming to church about 10 years ago, maybe more than 10 years ago. But before that, I would only come at Christmas, um, Easter and baptisms. Uh, but there was a time when we started looking at the uh, gifts of the Spirit in the church and that took me into reading my Bible quite intensely for a while. And um, I, I was kind of a bit scared reading it that I tried to figure out where am I going to go with this because I got quite frightened I wasn't going to be saved. And then one night, um, bang, <laughs> it all came to fruition. That I realised, I just it wasn't like I heard words, it was just it was very obvious that I, I was saved. And we were jumping about the room and laughing and, and my head off. It was incredible. Went to church and like most people came away from it then at some point ended up thinking I have to go to church. I was in a bad relationship and it was kind of coming to the end and this thought was I have to go to church, I have to go to church. And that basically finished the relationship which was great because it was not good. But didn't follow through with going back to church. And then about 10 years later, I had that knock, knock, knock in the heart and thought, right, okay, I hear you, I'm coming. And basically started coming back to church and here we are and eight years later, getting ready to be baptised. So there were a series of events. Um, my, my mother died, um, actually uh, preparing to go to church, which is how she would have liked to have gone. Um, my dad was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Uh, my marriage broke up. Uh, I lost my job. My daughter went to live in Canada. And then I had an accident. So it felt as if um, my world was kind of ending it, to be honest. Um, but I always felt like I had God. And I, and I, I never ever felt that he left me. Um, I always felt there was a comfort there. I, and I was saying that there's a television program I watched and in it uh, the person said that every night they release their, their insecurities and anger and everything up to God and, and I do every night too. I was walking through the town one day and I met some people from this church who were giving out leaflets and I took the leaflet just for something to read, something to do, and I walked away. And about five minutes down the road, I read, I actually took the time to read the leaflet. There's a story about a guy who had a, who came to Jesus and he'd had a problems in his life. His life sounded similar to my own experience. And it came, the story, his story chimed with me. And I decided I would like to find out more about this. and. Because I've always had a religious part of my life, but 
I will have never really been a great attender of churches. I decided to come looking for this place, and uh, this place happened to be around the corner from my old work. Uh, we used to say in the, the garage, the buses weren't guaranteed until we got out past Inglefield Street, and that's how I knew that the garage and the bus and uh, the church were close to one another, and that's where I found the church, and I came in and I've been coming in ever since. I really like it here. I find it quite canny. I like the services, I like the people. I've not met a bad person yet here. I enjoy the music. I like the pastor's messages when he's talking and I enjoy, I've enjoyed every minute of it. I got a good bunch that I've been here. When I was growing up in my teens, I was, um, it was going through a bit of a rough time. Family unit had broken down. Um, Everyone was going off doing their own thing, and I was, I was just stuck. I was, I felt alone. I felt I was in, invisible, um, and this carried on into my teens, throughout my twenties. Still stuck in the same situation, still feeling stuck and alone. I didn't think much of myself. Um, I constantly put myself down. I was, I had no confidence, no self-esteem. And and that that was me till my twenties, my but there came a point where, Caroline, you cannot be in that situation. It's not doing you any good. and. My sister would always encourage me to come to church, um, but I just, I wasn't ready. Um, but there came a point where you've got to get yourself out, out of this, not rut, into this, out of the, this lonely place. And um, so I picked up the courage to come to church one Sunday and then um, I didn't look back, but before that, I always thought there's something missing. I, I didn't know what it was, and it wasn't until I started coming to church. Um, it wasn't something, it was someone, that someone was Jesus, and, um, and I haven't looked back. And it may have taken me a long time to accept who I am um, and to where I am now. I'm, I'm not looking back. Jesus was missing from my life and um, I'll, I'll tell him. Uh, and I'm coming to faith now. Again, I want to just to show public and declare to myself and to my public, to my family, my friends. That's it, I've come to faith. Uh, that's why I want to go through this full, full baptism. Uh, whereas before, as I said earlier, my mother and father made a vow with me for a sprinkling of water, but that wasn't the same. That was a commitment from my father and father to make. And now I want to make that commitment and be fully baptised in the church. I mean. I've come from to you give your life to the Lord and everything's going to change and you come to church and you read your Bible and that's it. But there's more to it than just that and baptism is part of that journey and learning more about the Holy Spirit and how he works in your life and how you can transform your life really. And that's why I want to have this another step, this next part of the journey, really, basically. I feel that if no, I feel that when I'm baptized I don't know if this sounds silly, I'll be complete. It'll be, it just feels the right thing to do. I was christened as a baby, but that wasn't my choice. That, that was my parents' choice and I appreciate that because um, I think maybe it leads you to a Christian life. But this is my choice. This is my decision. And it's the right decision. I've been baptised as what I think is going on in my journey. It's there's something that's in the Bible, 
is something that I want to do. It's, when Jesus gives out his message, he wants you to be like him. And if it was good enough for him to get baptised, it's good enough for me to get baptised. I should be one to do that because he is the master for, for everything. He's the greatest. You get your best advice off him. I mean, when I was in my moments I had that self-doubt, I was reading self-help books and stuff like that. And But I was getting something out of them, but then I discovered that there was a guy, a self-help book I was reading, a guy who was taught, kept quit, quoting things from the Bible, things for Jesus in it. I went, why do I need self-help books when the Bible's probably the original self-help book? So I don't bother with the self-help books anymore. I'll get more into this and I'll get a Bible, I'll go to this church, this Elam church that I've discovered and you know, things have been working out a bit better for me. I'm a lot calmer. I'll, a lot more centred, I'm beginning to like my life again and get on with life and I'm enjoying it. It's a time here. I want to be baptised because Jesus sees me for who I am. Um, when I started coming to church, I, I didn't understand um, the, the Bible. I didn't, um, uh, I couldn't remember um, the verses of um, that are in the Bible off off by heart, or I had to I had to go and look it up, and um, I gave myself such a hard time because I couldn't remember and I couldn't understand. But that's not my fault. I've got I've got a slight learning difficulty, and I was always, you know, not slightly ashamed because I've got a learning difficulty, but just because of what because I couldn't remember. I just couldn't remember what was said in the Bible and I couldn't retain the information but this went on for a while and there came a point where Caroline you've got to stop beating yourself up and thinking oh you're not good enough to you know understand this you're not good enough to remember these verses it but it doesn't matter. Jesus loves me for who I am, not what, not what I should know. What I sh not because I I should know every detail of the Bible. I should know every verse and remember it. It's it's not about that. Jesus loves me. Of doesn't matter of my learn uh, my slight learning difficulty. It doesn't matter that I don't have a good job. It doesn't matter that I don't have, um, you know, all the qualifications that other people have. It doesn't matter. He loves me. And that's why I'm getting baptised today.